It is a cold, snowy Martin Luther King Monday. <laughs> so I'm staying hunkered down. The chickens haven't even come out of the coop because they just don't feel like it. So I am just doing some chores that need to be done. And so we are ready to go once the weather gets nice and warm. <laughs> so I've been getting a lot of questions about when the litters are going to come as far as like the people buying from me. I thought I would take you on a little plan with me video of how I plan the litters so that I don't end up with litters due while I'm gone or while I'm on vacation. I had that happen one time mainly because we left on a very short notice, like 10 day notice. And I was like, yeah, that's not happening again. I had three litters due while we were gone. Not a recommendation for sure. So I'm going to show you how I plan that out and just make sure at my very best, you know, things are going to happen and I have to leave or whatever. But at least I'm going to start myself off as best as possible throughout the year. All right, this is as good as I can get as far as angling down for you to be able to look at a calendar um, so I can really explain what I am talking about. Um, and so this will really help you um, just see it. So this is what we have to deal with. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is not, it has nothing to do with the animals. We're going to go through the calendar and mark off days that either we are going to be on vacation or times that you are just not going to be in town at all. So these are just made up. I didn't, this isn't for real <laughs> um, for us, but I just wanted you to see an example because it's very hard to either one, focus on um, a task or a, a fun day out with family or, or even be on vacation and focus on that if you are not going to be home and you have babies due at you know, where you are not at and you cannot manage or, or um, supervise that. And so we're going to take these off just because, um, just for, because these were just here for example's sake. Um, but those are things that, that's what you need to do ahead of time. Mark the times off that you don't want to have babies do first, okay? Then the next thing we're going to do, and if you have pedigrees, this is why I think they're invaluable, um, Namely, because it keeps you from having to remember everything. Um, but also, this makes planning very easy. Um, so, right here, this stack are all my adults that have had letters before. We're not basing the order in which we breed off of them. Okay? So, here are, and I have one more pedigree that's not printed. Um, these are the does that have not had a litter yet. And... With French Lops, you want to breed them between 10 and 12 months. Every breed is different. Um, but I have also waited too long and waited till like that 12 to 13 month um, range. And it just did not end well. The litters were not successful and they had a hard time delivering and things like that. So that is something I want to avoid at all costs. So these two are very close in age. They are the same month. Actually, they're two days apart. So... These two, they are one year old at the end of March. So at the very least, I want them bred before counting back to put them at the 10 month mark right around this week here in January. Okay. Now I can, the January is a little sketchy when it comes to weather. So I have decided to push it one month ahead into February and breed them on February 11th, okay? Now that would put them having their babies a little bit before they are 12 months, okay? So these two, because of how tight where their birth date falls, they get first priority. And so I figure out where they need to have their litters, okay? Now this one is much younger. She is, um, September 2nd is her one year birthmark. Um, so she should be bred between the 1st of July and into August. Um, so the thing with that is that that is getting very hot. So I'm going to try and push hers as late as possible. But with that said, I'm not worrying about her right now because she's got so, she's got a lot of months to go. So I'm just going to take her pedigree and tuck it back here. Now, with these two being first time mamas, 
they're, they're not going to be professionals at it, possibly. They may do fine, but we don't know that. So often what I'll do is take, go through the, the mamas that are very good at raising their litters and take one of them and breed them at the same time as theirs so that the, if any of these younger ones don't do well or maybe they're just not producing enough food for the litters that they do have, I can foster some of their babies with, with the one that knows what she's doing, okay? I hope that makes sense. Um, so typically I will do three rounds of breedings because I want all my litters done during the warm months. So what I'll do then, now that I, let's just pretend that I'm going to breed these three together, okay? So we're going to breed them around March 11th, or February 11th, excuse me. So I'm gonna put a screenshot of a um, rabbit gestation chart, but um, I also have that in the shop. So, but what happens really is you find your date that you want to breed them, which is um, February 11th for us, and then the number in the very next column over is their due date. So for them being bred, then February or March 14th is their due date. Okay. So that's the 31 days, roughly. So then what I'm going to do is count through up to eight weeks so I can find out when they're about to leave. Okay? So right about here, May 9th is roughly when they're going to be able to leave. Now, remember that I said that I have a tight schedule as far as trying to get all the litters done before the, cold, the weather turns cold again. So what I'm going to go do is go back to go back one month because it's about a month gestation. So the the first group of litters is about a month old around in here. So I'm going to, this is the exact four week point. Now that is cutting it a little close, but I like to try to see at the very least, keep it in my mind that I'm going, going to breed the second group of does this week because sometimes the weather is bad, sometimes they're just not in the mood. And so if it doesn't work, I have some wiggle room here to where, you know, I can wait a week or two and still not be feeling crunched with time before fall comes around. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's how I typically will go through and schedule each one. Once I get the first one settled in, then I, you know, plan out the second group and then the third one, depending on, you know, how many I have. Um, I have found that three litters at a time is happy, <laughs> a happy state for me. Um, doing any more than that kind of gets a little hairy and I just don't enjoy it. That's the thing is we want to make sure we enjoy what we're doing. Okay. So I would just continue that out through the rest of the year. And that's why I like these large calendars. This is like a massive desk calendar. Um, and so that way I can just get messy with it. It doesn't matter what I write on here. Um, and then I will plan out the rest of the letters. And one final note I wanted to pop on before I wrap this video up is that I did it with an animal that I can, I, I can predict when, or I can breed them when I want, but things like dogs or cattle or, um, anything that has to be in heat to be bred, that can be a little bit more sketchy. So how you would do that is you would flip it in the order. So if you know that they're going to be in heat right around in here, you mark that on the calendar, then you go back and count back to when, or well, really you would count forward <laughs> when they would be due, and then you would plan your vacations and basically plan your life around the animals. That's kind of the life we've signed up for. <laughs> Whether we kind of knew it at, at the beginning, eh, that that's still yet to be seen. But with all that said, you can reverse the order that I did it in the video if you don't have control over when you can breathe the animal, you have to go by when they are in heat.